Have you ever recorded a video only to find out later that something ruined your narration track? For example, maybe your voice was too quiet, or maybe there was a lot of echo or background noise. Before today, you'd have no option but to re-record the audio, or in many cases, the whole video. Now, recent advancements in technology have enabled AI to analyze and reconstruct audio, and it's as easy as uploading a file. Oh, and did I mention it's free? No more filters with complicated settings that make your voice sound like mush. Just better sounding audio. To show you just how impressive and powerful this feature is, I'll turn it off. Yes, I'm using it to enhance the audio right now. You can't see it, but I'm recording from my smartphone using the internal mic. This is one of the worst ways to record audio, and you can hear why. But when I upload the audio track and enhance it, it sounds noticeably better. The volume is louder and more level, and the noise and echo have been greatly reduced. It's not as detailed of a sound as I would get if I recorded the original audio with a better mic, but it is far better than the result I'd get from a standard noise reduction filter. So how did I do this? Let's jump over to Adobe Podcast, which is not quite open to the public yet, but the features we will be using are accessible to anyone with a Creative Cloud account. This software is geared toward podcasters, but anyone who records their voice can utilize this. This website works better on a desktop, so if you're using this on a phone, you may need to switch to the desktop version of the website to see all of the content on the page. Under Quick Tools at the top are two very useful features, Enhance Speech and Mic Check. We'll start by exploring Mic Check, because even if you don't have a need to enhance poorly recorded audio, anyone can benefit from proper mic placement. Taking this small step before recording can eliminate most of what ruins audio to begin with. For the best results, you should record with a mic that is stationary, but this can also be helpful for handheld mics too. Be sure the correct mic is selected as your primary microphone in your computer settings. Next, click on Start, then be sure to give microphone permissions to Adobe Podcast so it can hear your mic. After that, you will click the Test Mic button, and then say, How is my microphone setup and placement? Then click Stop. The diagram on the right will update to show you the analysis of your audio, and you'll be presented with some suggestions for how to improve your sound. The goal is to get the green check marks inside the range of each category. I'd start with gain because that controls how sensitive your mic is. If you're using a mic with a gain knob, or your mic is connected to an audio interface or mixer, then that is the first gain to set. But there is also a second gain control in your computer settings that works independently, so you may need to adjust both. Click the test button again and adjust the gain until you're landing within the acceptable range. Next, check the distance to your microphone. Depending on the type of mic you use, it may need to be closer or farther away, usually closer because that captures less of the echo around you. I'm using a shotgun mic, so I don't want it to appear in frame. I will be sure to place it as close as possible, but out of sight. You may not have as much flexibility with your mic, and it may need to be in frame for the best results. Try to find a position that looks good and gives you better audio. It's okay if the audio is not perfect, as long as it has been improved compared to how you were recording. You may need to tweak the gain a bit more if it goes out of range. You'll notice as you begin to make improvements to the gain and distance, the background noise and echo checks begin to move closer to the acceptable range. Once your distance and gain are properly set, the last two options should be fairly close to the target range, if not within it. If not, then you can try to further improve your sound. Background noise is referring to constant background noise, not intermittent noises like dogs barking. For that, you will need Scooby Snacks. You may be able to eliminate or at least reduce background noise by turning off your AC or fan, closing a window, or purchasing a quieter computer. Echo can be reduced by placing more objects in your room, especially on your walls to absorb or break up reflections. I won't go into sound treatment in this video because it's complicated, but the worst thing you can do is record in a room with bare walls and floors. For now, you can hang some thick blankets out of the frame and put down a rug, but eventually you may want a more elegant solution. Now at this point, if your test passes and your audio sounds clear, you shouldn't need to enhance your audio after recording it because it should sound pretty good as is. Ideally, you should leave your mic configured like this, and don't change any of the settings or the mic position. Then you'll be able to sit down and record without having to do anything to the audio. 
The only time you need to follow the next step is if your audio gets unintentionally ruined, you don't pass the mic check test, you're using a poor quality mic like the one on your phone, or you're trying to improve someone else's audio to combine it with your own. Next, let's explore how to enhance audio. Here's an example of an audio track I recorded on my phone with my fan running in the background. I'll go to the Quick Tools menu and choose Enhance Speech. Adobe only accepts MP3 and WAV files, and the limit is one hour or one gigabyte per file. You may need to split your audio into several tracks if you're exceeding this limit. The only tricky part to this process is getting the audio separated from the video and then recombining it. Technically, you want to avoid extracting audio by re-encoding it as a different file type, because that could further degrade the audio quality. But since you're probably using this feature out of necessity, or maybe even desperation, it's worth potentially sacrificing some quality to get a usable track. If you choose to use this method, then simply render your project as a WAV or MP3, matching the quality settings of the original audio. Be very careful not to reduce the quality settings. The advantage to using WAV is that it will not further compress your audio like MP3 would. However, the disadvantage is that the file size of a WAV will be much larger and will take longer to upload, especially if the audio is lengthy. MP3 may be the better option if time or bandwidth is a concern. The proper way to extract audio would be to put it into a different container without re-encoding it. EVidMux is one such example of a free application that can do this. I simply open the video and choose PCM for WAV or MP3 under the audio output setting, then separate the audio from the video in the menu. Without having to wait for a re-encoding, I instantly get the audio file in its original quality. This is my preferred method. Now I can simply upload the audio file and wait for it to be processed. If privacy is a concern, keep in mind that you're uploading your audio to a remote server, so technically it would not be a good idea to process anything that is secret or sensitive information. Despite claiming that some files can take up to 10 minutes to process, I have found that it can take a lot longer than that because the file has to be uploaded and then processed. In my experience, this can take more like 30 minutes to an hour, especially if it's a long audio track. During this time, you don't get a progress bar or anything to reassure you that the file is still processing. It feels very unresponsive. If you're like me and you're impatient, come back later for the results. It'll be worth the wait. Fortunately, this is just a short example file, so it didn't take long at all to process. You can hear the before and after using the preview. It sounds much better. This technology is not perfect though. For example, I have uploaded unusable audio that was barely audible with background noise dominating the recording, and it came back clear enough to understand. However, when there were words spoken that the mic did not pick up clearly, some words were slurred or replaced with incorrect substitutions. I think what's happening here is that my voice is being modeled into a virtual voice, and that is used to read the captions generated from the audio. So if the audio is not clear, the transcription and the resulting narration will have imperfections. Despite sounding a little drunk, the vast majority of the audio was salvaged and totally usable compared to the original which would have been discarded. That project would have been a total re-record if not for this software, and I've had to re-record many projects throughout my career due to audio problems. So this feature has the potential to save a lot of time and headaches for content creators. And this is just an early attempt at enhancing audio. Just imagine how much this technology will improve over the coming years. Now to put that enhanced audio back into my video track. There are two ways to do this. I can place the wave into my video project, overriding the old audio track, then finish my edits and render the final video. Or if I don't need to edit the project, I can use something like EVidMux to replace the original audio track with a new one without having to re-encode the video. I'm sure all of this extracting and replacing the audio will eventually become more streamlined as Premiere Pro and other video editing software begin to utilize this technology. The mic check and audio enhancement features we looked at today are included in Adobe Podcast. I haven't tried it yet because I don't have a podcast, but I have been using script-based editing in Premiere Pro and it has made editing much faster. If you are unfamiliar with script-based editing, it's worth checking out because I think it will probably become the standard approach for many types of video projects. I won't go into detail about that in this video because I wanted to focus specifically on the free features that anyone can use, but you can check out the website if you want to learn more about how Adobe Podcast works. I also want to remind you that I have recorded this video using a smartphone, so although it's not the most professional sounding, 
It's good enough for social media and many other applications. With this technology, you can create content on a low-budget setup like a smartphone. In fact, I plan to do it myself. Obviously not for every video, but it makes me feel more confident that I'll get a usable product if I ever want to record using only my phone. Without the enhancement, the audio becomes very distracting and sounds amateurish. Audio like this can really hold your content back. So considering the ease of use and relatively little effort involved, this really is a game changer for content creators across the world. Whether or not this remains free is yet to be seen, but I don't doubt that this type of AI enhancement will become ubiquitous and maybe even built into low budget mics in the future. AI enhancement may even make audio quality irrelevant as is becoming the case for image resolution. That's all for this tutorial. Between these two features, I hope you are getting much better audio. If you enjoyed this lesson, become a subscriber and member of this channel and check out some of my other content creator tutorials. Thanks for watching and stay creative.